Back in September, my guest today was 80% in cash. She was expecting a huge stock market correction ahead of the election. We didn't quite see that, but he says it's still coming. Uh, and I want to find out how he's allocated today. Clem Chambers of Investors Hub uh, joins me today. Clem, always good to see you. Great to see you too. Well, I've done a handbrake turn since then. Well, um, I'm, I'm, tell me, yeah, what have you done? Well, I'm now 80% in stocks. And the reason for that was, I mean, basically, there was a, a stick save by the Fed and various other central banks to stop it from crashing. And what's happened in where I tend to invest, which tends to be in Europe, is that it broke out and started to make the fundamental crash recovery um, form of the W, the last leg, leg of the W. And I, I was expecting it to go down right to the bottom of, of, of that W, but it's basically now in the last leg because they come out and they've done it a few times. They've come out and just printed money and pumped it into the market and up goes assets. I mean, you know, it's a very dangerous strategy they're doing, but I suppose it's slightly less dangerous than crashing the world stock markets and putting us all down into a fiery crater. But, you know, if they're going to keep doing this, all it means is we're going to get runaway inflation end, end of next year. And, you know, you've got to trade what you see. And what I was seeing was a crash and we nearly had it. And they came out and they said, right, you know, get those printing presses running hot. And up it's gone. More, more money into the system, more money into assets. And up goes the stock market. Now, the markets that I invest in haven't really come steaming back like America. And America is at in crazy heights. And it's a big... Damocles sword over everybody's head because if that string snaps and that sword falls, we're all in big trouble. But in say the UK, where you Americans wouldn't believe the UK market is so primitive, it's so cheap, and it's so stupid that there's huge amounts of value there. So, you know, I've been riding that value up, and it's just a different world. It might as well be the Stone Age over here in terms of valuations. You know, there's nothing like the crazy stuff you get with Apple and with Tesla over in, in, in the UK. So I'm writing the value play here and I hate it because it's all gonna store up, you know, great tears next year of what's going on now, but you know, you've got to run your profits. Okay, let's get back to the US here. You've been calling for a stock market crash for quite a long time. You said you didn't see it ahead of the election, but that the, that second wave of the COVID crash would hit. Uh, you were looking at a timeline sometime between whatever the election and February. Has that changed? Well, uh, the call is, are they just going to keep printing money until money gets to be, you know, immensely devalued? And, you know, it's really, it's high risk, let's just put it that way, what they're doing. And it's going to end in tears. It's just a question of timing. And, you know, time in the market is very difficult. And if you look at the charts, you can see the crash I was talking about forming. And I suppose they were looking at it too, going, oh, we're just going to crash. Oh, we're going to be, oh, we're well, just, you know, crank the handle, print some more money. Well, you know, that is um, a, a plaster on the wound and they're going to keep doing it until something really seriously breaks. Now, getting that right is going to be difficult. What's going to actually, I believe, will cool that move will be gold because gold will start to run. And at the moment, you can see gold is, is under pressure, but kind of young, um, sparkly gold, Bitcoin, is doing that run right now. So the fastest horse in the race is Bitcoin. Gold is sluggish because remember, gold has a huge consumption in jewelry and that market is down on its uppers and therefore gold is, is, is lagging. But at some point, the lack of demand from the jewelry industry is going to be swamped from, by the investment industry and then gold is going to run. And that will be the signal that we're into the next phase of this incredible um, era of inflation. And that's going to come soonish, I think. I mean, it's hard to time things. There's a little bit of, of funkiness in gold right now, which is quite interesting. But okay. when it goes, it's going to blow. Wouldn't you argue that inflation's already here, Clem? Yeah, it is in places, in patches. I mean, I went to, I, 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 I live in Monaco, okay? I'm quite good at the markets, so therefore I live in Monaco. And the price of tulips has tripled. Now, that is a bit, you know, it's a bit of a vague thing to say. But of course it's tripled because nobody's buying tulips. And therefore, the people that are buying tulips have to support the tulip shop. And so therefore, the tulip shop has to double, triple its prices to stay in business because the lack of demand means the prices have to go up. Restaurants with half the seats have to have more expensive menus because they can't pack it with people. So, I, you know, right. the situation is creating inflation in, in spots at the moment. But at some point, this water money is going to do the rest. 
and I just got a beautiful visual of Clem shopping for, for tulips. But Clem, uh, you're a huge proponent of, of Bitcoin. Uh, you've said in the past that, you know, do your homework, but most investors should own, own some sort of Bitcoin in their portfolio. Uh, so if you're 80% uh, equity is primarily European here, uh, is the rest in Bitcoin? Well, I, I kind of don't think of um, my, my, part, my pretty uncomfortable part of Bitcoin at the moment because I bought it so low and I was quite eager to do so. Now it's, you know, high. It's, I believe in portfolio diversification and I'm kind of not very comfortable with my lack of diversification, but I don't see that like stocks. So I'm not going to be trading in and out of Bitcoin. I'm a hodler. It's almost like burying gold in your garden. You kind of don't feel <laughs> right. like it's an investment because it's so long, it's almost like a pension. I, I, I am a hodler, and I think the only way to go with, with crypto, well, there's two ways to go. There's buying all the crazy stuff, which is in DeFi at the moment, and that will give you plenty of fun. But when you go outside of that, it's like being, if you were an Apple believer 25 years ago, you know, buying Apple at 12 cents or whatever it is in, in modern money now, a thousandth of the current rate. I mean, you sink that money and you kind of, when are you ever going to sell? Like when you die. And so it's kind of not like, yes, I've got, I got a fair old chunk in, in, in crypto, but of the other stuff, which I would consider to be, oh, that's cheap, buy that. Oh, that's gone up, sell that. Oh, there's another one, buy that. Oh, that's gone down. Oh, I've closed that one out. 80% of that is, is, is now in stocks. The crypto, I might have well have taken a gold brick and put it in, you know, ripped it up in my fireplace like they used to do in the old days. So I don't really consider that to be, you know, I don't consider that to be the trading um, equity, the investing equity. Mm. It's uh, going to be hodled. If it hits 40, 50,000, I think it's probably going to come out of that zone and I'm going to start going, oh, God, you know, I'm over, I've got too much of this now. I'm going to have to think about it differently. It sounds to me that you've also had a change of heart when it comes to gold, because when I've spoken to you in the past, Clem, uh, you were not always a fan of gold, but now you, I'm sensing some, some bullishness here. Well, I've got to say that I wasn't a fan of gold before COVID, and I wasn't a fan of gold before they decided to go from a world of billions into a world of trillions. I mean, they just shifted the decimal point, right? Well, you know, that's what's going to kind of happen to money. They're going to shift the decimal point. So your your ten dollar um, well ten dollar gallon of gas here is going to be a hundred dollars. Yeah, your your two dollar um, uh, loaf of bread is going to be eighteen dollars. But when well maybe that's five six years out. But that's what's happened, and you need to find a place to put this fungible paper promise of promissory stuff and get it into an asset which is easy, flexible, liquid, and you can flip in and out of. Well, gold's not as good as Bitcoin. And gold's not quite as good as a lots of different kinds of equities that have, um, you know, liquidity and interesting hedges against inflation. But it's pretty damn good hedge against inflation, and it is pretty liquid as well. Okay, but la last thought before I let you go, Clem. Uh, will Bitcoin or is Bitcoin right now taking a chunk out of gold? Well, uh, there's an old saying that says, "What's good for jeans is good for Levi's," or maybe it's "What's good for Levi's is good for jeans." <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I mean, somebody, some young, young and Turk in the brokerage world said that gold was boomers Bitcoin. And, you know, I don't think it's going to be a shortage of demand for inflation hedges going forward. And, you know, all these trillions that are popping out of, of the printing presses are got to go somewhere. Right. And they're going to go into um, inflationary um, hedging assets. So there's going to be massively increased demand for that because, you know, I, I love gold, but not as, as a financial asset. Well, now I'm, I'm really attracted to it as a financial asset. So I've gone from somebody with a reasonable amount of resources who, you know, I'll buy a gold watch. I'll buy a gold coin from, you know, the 11th century or whatever. But I wouldn't go, go and buy a gold bar. Well, now I, I will. So, you know, you multiply that out against lots of, um, you know, well-off, old, miserable, um, you know, paranoid um, old men, of which is an infinite supply. And you've got an infinite demand for gold, haven't you? And it could go where, Clem? Well, gold, it's an easy double. Easy double time frame? Well, the, the thing is, with all markets that go exponential, right, it's hard to guess the timing and the length of that final spike. Yeah, and maybe it just spikes and stays up there and then spikes again. Because, you know, gold isn't doing it. 
It's not the fact that cavemen have always loved gold that's doing it. It's the fact that people in central banks keep going, control P, control P. Oh, yeah, don't worry about the fiscal debts, says whatever World Bank. Yeah, go control P, control P. The world needs more money to pay for all this debt we're building up. Control P, control P. No, that is what is going to drive that. And when are they going to stop? I mean, when I was a kid, I used to collect stamps, and these were the days of inflation, and I made a ton of money as a sort of 13-year-old buying stamps from stupid um, school children like myself and selling them to professionals in London. I made what must be equivalent of 30 grand for a, and for a 12, 13-year-old, that's a lot of money. And those were the days of inflation. That's why stamps went through the roof. But my favourite stamp was the 4 billion mark stamp in Germany. Yeah? So, you know... How many zeros? It's not digits anymore. It goes, how many yeah. zeros are these guys going to push out? Yeah. You know, trillions of, of Turkish lira. That was only 10 years ago, right? Clem, uh, it's always uh, refreshing and wonderful speaking with you. And why can't we just do control P at home? Well, Wouldn't I do. I call, it's called buying Bitcoin. <laughs> well, actually, Send some my having, way then. Having so, oh, a beautiful girl asking me to send the Bitcoin. That's been a long time. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, uh, Clem, thank you so much. I know you got to go. Uh, come back more often, okay? Yeah, whenever you like. All right. And thank you for watching this installment of Stansberry Research. We're on all social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm Daniela Cambone. <laughs>